Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it's my honour to rise to speak to this motion. And, Mr. Speaker, I'll be sharing my time with the member for Abitibi, Tamiskaming. Mr. Spe Speaker, we are here today debating a very important motion, a motion that relates to the right of all Canadian children to have a childhood. And specifically, what we're calling for is the immediate investment of an additional $105 million in new funding for the delivery of child welfare as identified in the shortfall this year. Establishing a funding plan for future years that will end the systemic shortfalls in First Nation child welfare, as ruled by the Human Rights Tribunal. Third, implementing the full definition of Jordan's principle. Fourth, fully complying with all orders of the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal. Fifth, committing to stop fighting Indigenous families in court and spend, instead spend that do those dollars on their medical and social services. And finally, making public all pertinent documents related to the overhaul of the child welfare system and the implementation of Jordan's principle. Why, Mr. Speaker, is this action necessary? Well, we had in January of this year the historic ruling by the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal and that tribunal ruled that the Canadian government had racially discriminated against 163,000 First Nation children in, a systematically, in systematically underfunding services to them, therefore putting those children at risk far and above other Canadian children. They ruled clearly that the underfunding amounted to systemic racism. As the director of First Nations Child and Family Caring Society, Cindy Blackstock, of whom many in, in this place have spoke glowingly, and she certainly is a hero for Canadian children, she has said, in quotes, something seriously wrong, is something seriously wrong that she would have to pursue this critical right over an entire decade in the courts, simply for the rights of First Nations children to have the same rights as other Canadian children. And I think certainly everybody in this place would agree with that. We are speaking of First Nation children among Canadian children who are left to believe in truth that they are less worthy than others in this country. And if there's anything that can pull your heartstrings, it's when Cindy shares that Indigenous children have said to her that they feel that they are worth less because they are receiving fewer services. As others have said, the federal government is spending millions in opposing the delivery of rights to Indigenous Canadians and against delivering on the Jordan's principle instead of actually delivering those services. And we firmly believe, and I'm sure that all Canadians believe, it makes far more sense in uh, wise spending of taxpayers' dollars on delivering the very services that families need instead of taking them to court. Finally, the most important thing is, is it's time for this government to set an example to everybody else in this country and actually comply with the rulings ordered against them. And reprehensible, the Human Rights Tribunal has had to twice issue directives to them to comply with their order. So here we are today with a new Liberal government who promised immediate action, number one priority, nation to nation, and that they would deliver on the needs and the rights of First Nation children and their families. And yet we have this very government failing to even comply with the directives of the tribunal to deliver this mere $153 million. We have a situation of the tribunal having twice over to issue the compliance orders to the government merely to comply with the law. An order to order the federal government to ensure comparable services to Indigenous children. And what's important to point out here, Mr. Speaker, is that not only did the government fight the right of First Nation children to have comparable services, they fought the right and power of the tribunal itself to even consider the case, and then fought against Cindy Blackstock, who brought that case, her access to documents. In all three cases, she won against the government of Canada. Millions upon millions of dollars wasted fighting this case over a decade when they simply could have delivered the dollars to Canadian children. Well, what is Jordan's principle? We've spoken a lot about that in here. That arose because of a New Democratic Party motion in 2007, unanimously supported by the House of Commons. And essentially, it's quite simple. Everybody in this place in 2007 committed 
that um, all medical services uh, would be delivered to Aboriginal children and that they wouldn't be left in the quandary where a, a young Aboriginal child, Jordan, died while the federal and provincial, the federal and provincial governments argued over who was responsible for paying for her services. So the decision was, whoever has the first contact with the child delivers the service, you worry later about who pays. That ruling, um, that decision, pardon me, by this House, then was consistent with Canadian children's human rights, their constitutional rights, and their treaty rights. The tribunal held that the government has since that date systematically limited that duty in responding to medical needs. And as we heard my colleague earlier on um, from Timmins, James Bay, that we now have a case where Indigenous children are seeking me medical assistance, dental assistance, and we're at the state where almost there's 100% denial of every time they come forward with these special medical needs. So what they've been doing is systematically clawing back Jordan's principle and the tribunal ruled that that is not appropriate and that comparable services means comparable services and that children living on reserves, First Nation children, have the right to comparable access to medical services. A heartbreaking statistic on failed child welfare comes from my own province. An Alberta study reported that between 1999 and 2013, 145 children in foster care died. 75% 75, 75 of those children were Indigenous. The government later revealed that it was actually 741 deaths, including 24 infants. That surely will spur us to come forward and support this motion. We cannot allow this situation to continue. Justice Rosberg, Rosborough, an Alberta judge, found in an inquest into the death of a baby in the Samson Cree First Nation, and I quote from his report, in quotes, it would appear that there is significant disparity in the level of funding provided for children off reserve as opposed to those on reserve. An, un an archaic funding arrangement with the latter results and considerably fewer resources made available to them. Raven Sinclair, who is a professor of social services um, in Saskatchewan, stated that, in quotes, there are an incredible number of kids dying in care each year. This isn't just an accident. It is not a fluke of statistics. It's happening year after year, end of quotes. Mr. Speaker, as many in this place have said, this is not simply a request coming from New Democratic members. That's not what we brought forward the motion. It is endorsed by uh, credible organizations across this country. The Canadian Pediatric Association has called for immediate action on the Jordan's principle and immediate action on the ruling by the tribunal. They reference also this government's commitment to deliver on every recommendation by the Truth and Reconciliation um, Commission. Well, what was the Commission's number one priority recommendation? It was on the legacy of failure on child welfare. And they've called on the federal, provincial, territorial, Aboriginal governments to commit to reducing the number of Aboriginal children in care by providing adequate resources to enable Aboriginal communities and child welfare organizations to keep Aboriginal families together where it's safe to do so and keep the children in culturally appropriate environments. To prepare and publish reports on the number of Aboriginal children in care. Again, has been mentioned earlier, we don't have those, those statistics. And third, they call upon all levels of government to deliver fully on the Jordan's principle. As has been mentioned in this place, the Manitoba Legislature last evening unanimously called on this government to act and deliver the necessary dollars ordered by the Tribunal. The Child and Family Caring Society, under the direction of Cindy Blackstock, have said and reminded us children only get one childhood. It's our obligation here to make sure that they equally get that opportunity. National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, I call on this government to deliver fully and comply with the tribunal um, direction. And in there, as has been mentioned earlier, their budget deficit of over 30 billion, surely they can find a pitiful over 100 uh, million dollars for First Nation children. I ask every member in this place to support this motion and make this the Parliament that finally ended 
150 years of discrimination against Indigenous children. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.